You've got your values there. I hope. Can we have a look? Um, what did we get for this orange one here? I mean, you can almost eyeball it, can't you? Because we've chosen run of one each time. So what was the run for this one? Uh, sorry, the difference quotient, I should say. It's negative five, and then negative three, negative one, then one, then three, and then five. Okay, very good. Now, when you did your difference quotients over bigger triangles, when you're doing a width of um, a run of two, what happened to your numbers? What did you get? For example, there's like a big triangle go from here all the way down to there. What was your difference quotient in that case? Half of the rise. Say it again. Half of the rise. Half of the rise. So the rise in this case is from, uh, from 5 down to negative 3. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be a rise of negative 8. And then you divided by the run, which was 2. So that gives me negative 4, which is like the average between these, right? So if you can think, this section here, from thinking about this as negative 5 and then negative 3, as compared to thinking of something overall of negative 4, the negative 5 and the negative 3, that's more accurate, isn't it? Right? Uh, but we could have gone more accurate than this, right? Um, I could have said instead of doing, you know, one unit this way, this way, this way, this way, um, this is a big enough graph. Couldn't you have done like run of, say, half a unit? Yeah. Could you? You totally could, right? Uh, in fact, let's, let's find a spot over here, maybe on the right hand side of the diagram, right? Let's go from, um, from x equals 3 all the way to x equals 5. Can we draw some new triangles on here? And this time I only want to go half a unit. You're going to need to use your ruler for this one because I actually want some measurements this time. So this is roughly what it's going to look like. Uh, that looks like half to me, right? So you're going to have triangles that look like this. And then this one's going to go across like so. Can you do that for me? I'd like some more accurate triangles here. Wait. Yes? Can you see that? Yeah, sort of like jagged teeth, if you like. Okay, now as you're doing that, Here's the thing I want you to notice. Uh, let's, let's forget about units for a second. I, I tried to get this right on your page, but those squares are not quite one centimeter. I actually wanted it bigger so you can see it easier. Um, let's all just use our rulers. And can you measure these? I've got one, two, three, four heights, four rises, right? Um, can I get, let's see, we've got four columns here. Can we get you guys over on the left? Can you measure as accurate as you can? Maybe give me the nearest millimeter. The first one. Um, so can you guys do the second one? Here in this column, can you do the third one? I want the height. We all have the same width, we all have the same run, but the rise is what I'm after. And then lastly, can you guys get me this last one over here? That should be enough time for you. Who's measured out the first triangle and its rise? Just give me a number of millimeters on your ruler. What did you get? 1.8? Centimeters is what I'm guessing? Yep, great. Um, second triangle? Use your ruler. 3.2. Three. Is it that? Really? Does it go that far? Yeah. The like second one? 3.2? Like on one. This one here? I got like 2.8. Yeah, that sounded a little more on the money to me. Um, the third triangle? 4.4. 4.4. And the last one? Four. Really? Are you sure? <laughs> Does anyone see why I'm suspicious of this? Sadan, what do you got? Have you got a rule on there? So what we're doing is we're measuring halfway across this between four and five, right? And then we'll come over to here, and this is the distance we're measuring up here. I'd be very surprised if it was less than 4.4. <laughs> can, we, can we all have a look at that? Five point... I got 3.6. 3.6? It's got to be more than 4.4. 4.6? It's got to be more. It's got to be more. Okay. I'm just looking, whoa. yeah, interesting, okay. So what you're noticing is, right, it's covering increasing rises even for the same run. In other words, it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper, which is what you saw every time, right? Um, for the big triangles with a run of two, for your smaller ones with a run of one, and then for these guys with a run of a half, right? And you could work out um, what your distance were for each of those, okay? What if, I wasn't limited by you know, what I could do with a ruler. What if I could make this run like really, really tiny? This is me going back to this guy, right? Sorry, doing this upside down. 
This is me going back to this model. See this? Get rid of my triangles now, right? Ugh. I can go in further. I can go in far enough because of wonderful technology until such a point as you're like, oh, I can see the difference. Right? I can see the discrepancy between like this is my triangle and then the actual graph. But then if I go in further, all I want to try and do is make this value small enough until like, can your eyes tell the difference? Mine can't. Like that triangle might as well be the graph. Does this make sense? And the thing is, I mean, here's, here's the width of my triangle on this one, right? But I can make this smaller and smaller and smaller. I have no limits to what I can do mathematically as opposed to the limits that I have when I'm thinking about physical measurement, okay? All right, so with that setting, I want you to make a new heading. And that new heading is... Uh, yeah, this is, this is weird, right? The heading I want you to make is... Sorry, you can tell me? Thank you. <laughs> this idea of taking... I should have... I was inviting trolling for that anyway, so that's fine. Um, of taking ever smaller sections and say, what if we can get more accurate, more accurate? Is it possible to be infinitely accurate? That is the domain of what we call calculus. Question. So you know in the last one we added negative 5 and negative 3 and we got neg negative 8? Yes. For the triangle? Yep. We These two? The, we got like 4. Or yep. That's because well, you were actually measuring just um, distances with a ruler, um, whereas these are just all with ones, right? Does that make sense? Whereas I think on your page it's like one point, I don't know, one point three or one point four or something like that. That's the reason for the different numbers. Okay. Well, only Alex would be <laughs> he'd, he'd be having a good time. All right. So this difference question, right? Difference question. What it tells us. If we can just write this um, result out again, right? This big fraction, this was the rise, you will recall, and what was the run? The run was just called h, right? What this tells us is the gradient of those, um, those sections that we saw before, right? Sorry, I keep doing this, right? So see these guys here, the hypotenuses, the hypotenuses, because they join together, two points on the curve, right? Do you guys know, you may, may or may not remember this, it's a long time ago when you covered this, but when you got introduced to circles in year seven, you may have learned that when you join two points on a circle, do you know what the name of this interval is? Does anyone know? It's actually a musical word. This is called a chord. A chord, you haven't had to use this word for a long time, so it's okay if you've forgotten. So it's a chord, when you join two points on this curvy thing, right? Well, each of these hypotenuses also joins two points on this curvy object, right? So we also call them chords, okay? So what the chord is, or rather what the difference quotient is, is the gradient of the chord. That's what you're working out, the gradient of the chord, okay? Now another word that's kind of, uh, it means a different thing, but it's sort of analogous to it in this case. If you took this chord on this circle, right? And um, you actually made it extend out so it didn't start and stop at a particular point if it just went on for infinity. Does anyone know what that's called? It's a bit different. It's a line. It's a line and it cuts the circle. Do you remember? So a, a, a cut off section, right, is a sector. But when you're using this line, we call it a secant or second, right? It's, it's that same word. It means cut, okay? So like a cross section is where you cut a thing into like slices, right? So it's the gradient of the chord or, or the secant. It's really the same thing. It's an object, a line rather, that cuts through at the same time.